of class 12th english and today we are continuing with our revision and that is of chapter number 2 law spring okay my dear children this is part 2 of this chapter and in the previous part we have just seen uh, the story of a boy called sahib e alam who is uh, who was actually a rag picker a migrant from dhaka bangladesh and he along with his family actually migrated from bangladesh came to new delhi or rather now at present living in outskirts of delhi college seema puri not only he live over there but he along with 10000 rat pickers live over there in that seema puri area so the story of sahib e alam was really touching to our hearts as uh, again the theme of the story or this chapter law spring is poverty and child labor and we see how a boy a boy who needs to go to school a boy who actually should have been in school who should who should, who should have been actually enrolled in school and should actually be enjoying all the school uh, schooling days is actually doing rag picking for survival and how they uh, they live in a pathetic and miserable condition has been described how it was a leaking roof over their ha uh, sorry heads and women were wearing the torn up sarees still these people who are living in seema puri were really happy as what uh, they have a roof over their head and uh, really for adults this rag picking was a mode of survival or a mean of survival a mean of their livelihood this garbage meant to them a lot and for younger children who were also involved in this rag picking what this uh, was actually a great adventure wrap wrap in a gift or a a gift wrapped in adventure so we see how sahib also dreams of becoming a tennis his desire was actually becoming a tennis player as we see very intently he watches the tennis from outside area but he does not uh, fulfill or rather he does not have that pathway or approaching pathway to to fulfill his desire so he compensated by actually sick, uh, transiting from uh, the job of rag picking to a job call as working in a tea stall as a helper so we saw how his life definitely saw a transformation but that transformation was also uh, we can call surrounded by poverty and child labor definitely few improve uh, improve uh, we can call improvisation would have been there from a rag picker to a tea stall boy but now he was not his own master he has to work under somebody else so he lost his freedom of nature and now today again a next story of that particular chapter we are going to study that is i want to drive a car so before i move ahead i just want to look forward to my video that's working or not because yes it's working and somehow sometimes what happen my dear children it gets abruptly stop so i will be keep on looking that this recording is going on or not okay my dear children so i was telling you that today we are going to study about a, a boy called as mukesh who dreams of becoming uh, means who dreams that i want to drive a car means he wants to do something uh, with the car and why uh, we, we always feel that oh what's a big dream i want to drive a car because most of you studying in class 12 most of the boys have uh, definitely learned driving or uh, driving a car was is not a big deal for the boys at this age of teenage and definitely when you uh, will acquire the age of getting your license definitely you are going to drive it also many of you are illegally also driving so what's a big deal of driving a car everybody is having a car at their home and somehow they are going to learn from their parents one day one day or the other but why it's a big deal that i want to drive a car so here for mukesh this boy actually belongs from ferozabad and he actually hails from a family called as bangal makers so mukesh background is he is a, a bangal maker or his family is involved in the bangal making process as ferozabad is really famous for glass bangles kaach ki churiya ferozabad is famous for it so let's read the chapter uh, i want to drive a car mukesh insists on being his own master 
I will be a motor mechanic, he announces. So here Mukesh actually has a wish in his mind that he wants to become a motor mechanic. So there is no big dream becoming a motor mechanic. Nobody actually, we don't have set a goal studying in CBS English medium school. Um, none of us have ever set a goal like that and I will become a motor mechanic. I don't think so that my, out of my 100, and 100 uh, plus 100 students, anybody have actually thought of such ambition. Every Everybody has a big ambition, big dreams. We have a so much big dreams because we are actually born in a big or rich families. Let's see where he is born and how is his economical background. Do you know anything about the cars? I asked. So our author is asking, do Mukesh know anything about the cars? And he answers, I will learn to drive a car. He is answering, he is going to learn. Uh, learn how to drive a car oh my god he does not know anything about car it means he answers looking straight into my eyes and uh, the way he answers actually reflects he is full of determination and he's really confident that one day he will be a motor mechanic his dream zooms like a mirage amidst the dust of streets that fill his own town fill his town sorry ferozabad uh, famous for bangles so somewhere somewhere uh, it's just like a particle of dust that it's going to happen in the future nobody's sure that his dreams will be fulfilled every other family in Ferozabad is engaged in making bangles it is a center of india's glass blowing industry where families have spent generations working around furnaces welding glasses making bangles for all the women in the land it seems so Ferozabad is a place where almost all the families are involved in the business of bangle making okay they are actually making it seems that they are making the bangles for the entire world like that is a scenario means every next person every next family in the uh, in Ferozabad is involved in this business because all the women in especially uh, you know bangal is one of the uh, is a it's actually holding one of the great place in indian culture in indian female uh, the standards culture so we can call uh, that uh, that is uh, one of the important thing they are actually involved so how do they live mukesh family is among them okay so mukesh family is among one of the bangal making families none of them know that it is illegal for children like him to work in the glass furnaces with high temperatures oh my god so these children who are actually uh, working as a bangle maker they does not know number one thing that it is illegal for these children to work under high temperatures and in glass furnaces oh my god they does not know simply they are actually they have adopted what they have adopted whatever their family is doing so mukesh is actually just a child and in india child labor is banned banned so they does not know that they should actually not work they should go to school okay they does not know that they it's very dangerous for them to work okay and they are working under which condition oh my god in high temperature and glass furnaces okay in dingy cells without air and light oh my god you know what are dingy cells dingy cells are very small closed rooms very dark just like a cell of the jails and uh, very dark without no ventilation so uh, that is a temperature actually required for making uh, you know these bangles and these people are working in this such a disastrous condition the uh, that the law of enforce could get him and all those 20,000 children out of the hot furnaces where they slog their daylight hours often losing their brightness of their eyes oh my god not only Mukesh is doing this work as a child labor along with his family but along with him there are 20,000 other children if properly government takes an action if properly government seeks and try to investigate then these 20,000 children are going to get relief but these 20,000 children are actually forced by their own families 
to work in this dingy cells uh, which are having no light no ventilation under very hot temperature uh, and you know what they suffer they often the last consequences or rather they are losing their eyesight that has been said that the devastating condition is they lose their eyesight okay mukesh eyes being as he volunteers to take me home uh, means there is a ray of light or ray of hope in him which he proudly says is being rebuilt oh my god so here mukesh is telling our narrator that his own house has been renovated or being rebuilt so very proudly he is taking the narrator to his rebuilt home let's see what his rebuilt home look like is it a palace or mansion or what we da we walk down stinking glades choked with garbage can you imagine we all know the residential areas where we used to live we all know how the sweepers and the other people who are involved in this business definitely they come daily there is one garbage picking van used to come so that our residential area outside even our house our area our surrounding is also very neat and clean but see mukesh family mukesh house where he is taking the narrator it is sticky lanes everywhere garbage is there oh my god scattered okay and what past homes that remain howls a howl is a very small room a very dirty room okay okay with crumbling walls oh my god the walls are almost crumbling up in no proper we can call it plaster or proper whitewash it's just it seems that they are actually uh, very very sore walls and they are just going to come or fall on us okay wobbly doors okay making noise just like car car and car no windows okay no ventilation crowded with families of humans and animals coexisting in a primeval state oh my god seems that they are living in a very poor unhygienic state where humans and animals all the packed animals all the humans are living in that small place with fully crumbling walls wobbly doors oh my god horrible condition you can you imagine do we live with our uh, means uh, like do we have animals in our house okay pet animals definitely we always have pet animals like dogs and cats still we have a special arrangement for them okay in our houses if we do keep pet uh, if we do keep pets in our house but see here here animals not even pet animals they have called me animals mind it can be farm animals also living along with the animals in a small area very crowded very stinky and very unhygienic oh my god means p families who are making bangles are so so poor that they live in such pathetic condition He stops at the door of one such house, bangs a wobbly iron door with his foot, and pushes it open. We walk. We uh, we enter a half built shack. Okay, in one part of it, thatched with dead grass, is a firewood stove over which sits a large vessel of sizzling spinach leaves. On the ground is a large aluminium platter or more chopped vegetables. A frail young woman is cooking the evening meal for the whole family. Oh my god so what's going on at such type of house i explain you what type of house at such type of very dirty small house where it is almost a kacha house where the roof is actually made up of uh, you know uh, means it's just not a proper permanent roof it is just built with the somehow managed with sticks or tha or we can call straws and something like that he actually stopped and then they entered that house and it is really really like uh, in the in the on the ground there is something like we can call it is we do have gases in our house but it was not a gas it was a chula rather in which uh, there was something being cooked on a vessel and a young weak woman is actually woman is actually cooking trying to prepare the evening meal for the entire family i need to check my video whether it's going on so let me check yes it's working wonderful my dear children
so a very young woman is actually who is a weak woman also means not so healthy uh, is cooking the evening meal for the whole family through eyes filled with smoke she smiles she is the wife now who is she she is the wife of mukesh elder brother not much older in years she has begun to command respect as the bahu the daughter in law of the house already in charge of three men her husband mukesh and their father oh my god this young girl who actually has not attained the age of marriage but as she has been married early uh, beyond her age she is now has been uh, she actually has acquired the role of bahu or daughter in law and now she is in charge of three men means she has to do all the household works related to the house apart from uh, preparing meals and taking other household chores so she has to prepare meal for herself she has to prepare meal for her husband she has to prepare meal for mukesh and mukesh father means uh, that young girl who can be in school or in college is actually so early married to mukesh and the brother that now she has become a daughter in law and she is taking the responsibility of all the entire household co household chores Okay, when the older man enters, she gently withdraws behind the broken wall and bring her veil close to her face. Okay, as custom demands, daughter-in-law must veil their faces before male elders. So as soon as Mukesh father used to come in and around that place where she is cooking, who Mukesh Bhabi we can call, then she puts her uh, veil that is in Hindi we call it, we call it as a ghungat as it was a customary that uh, uh, these bahus give respect to the elders by putting this veil like ghungat okay so in the case of the elder is in, in, in this case the elder is an impoverished bangle maker so who is an elder Mukesh father is he is what he is doing he is an impoverished means not good quality of bangles a worse quality of bangle he can make means though his family moon's mukesh family is involved in the business of bangle making yet they does not know that art also very well still they have somehow his father has managed to make bangles and he is doing that business only okay Despite long years of hard labor, first as tailor and then a bangle maker, he has failed to renovate a house, send his two sons to school. All he has managed to do is teach them what he knows, the art of making bangles. So what is the condition of Mukesh father? He previously he was a tailor that uh, that work he was not able to do or rather there was no success for him as a tailor so he became a bangle maker and all these years entire his career as a bangle maker Mukesh father has still not able to renovate his house means we have seen how how the house has been described it has been described as hovel it has been described as a kacha house and very pathetic condition so he has not been able to build a proper house he has not been able to send his children to school but what he has been able to do he has been able to just teach his art of mangle making that is also not a skilled art he was having he also is a impoverished mangle maker so not only art he has taught to his children means Mukesh and his brother are illiterate and they also does not know anything they have never went to school they have never gone to school so they are uneducated and only thing they know is bangle making it is a karam. It is a karam, his destiny, says Mukesh's grandmother, who has watched her own husband go blind with the dust from polishing the glass of bangles. So see what Mukesh's grandmother is telling. It is the karam. Yeah, karam. It's our destiny, means it is our fate. Okay. And she has seen her own husband, means Mukesh's grandfather, going blind doing this work of bangle making. So the hazardous consequences of bangle making is quite often and mostly 100% this people who are involved in bangle making lose their eyesight. Okay my dear children. 
So, can a God-given lineage ever be broken? She implies, born in the caste of bangle makers, they have seen nothing but bangles in the house, in the yard, in every other houses, every other yard, every street in Ferozaba. Okay, my dear children, so this grandmother is something like a very, you can call bonded by the, on the clutches of tradition, bonded with uh, some sorts of traditional customary attitude. She says that we are born in this caste and that's why we have to carry forward this function. So there, here we also see that apart from Mukesh uh, family poverty or his uh, poor social background, there mindset not to progress in their life is also one of the main reason not only that uh, Mukesh family is also illiterate so they have never thought of actually progressing or improving their own status in the life okay as grandmother say oh this is god-given work and we have to do it it is our custom we are born in this caste carrying forward we see that uh, on page number 18 itself, it says that uh, spirals of bangles, sunny gold, paddy green, royal blue, pink, purple, every color born out of the seven colors of the rainbow lie in the mounds in the unkempt yards are piled on four wheel handcarts pushed by young men along the narrow lanes of the shanty town and in the dark hutments next to the lines of the flames of the flickering oil lamp sit boys and girls with their fathers and mothers welding pieces of colored glasses into circles of bangles their eyes are more adjusted to the dark than to the light outside that is why they often end up losing their eyesight before they become adults so here our narrator is actually uh, telling us the whole analysis of this entire world of bangle makers she is telling that every next house in Ferozabad you can find there is a cart uh, that four wheel cart we can call it a telagadi also and this cart is full of these bangles various colors almost all the colors of rainbows and they actually push it around and pull it carry it towards the entire town to sell it and you know young boys and girls uh, they have no other work just to eat and sit around this uh, flickering oil lamps in the dark rooms and just they are also helping hand to their parents and they also get involved in this work of bangle making in spite that they should go to school in spite they should be enrolled in the school they are just involved very from the very beginning the time which has been or rather the life uh, which is actually the time period of the beautiful precious life of the childhood which can be actually spent by going to school these young children are sitting around that oil lamps and making bangles along their along with their father and mother and what is the end result of it the consequences they often end up losing their eyesight and we can see that once they lose their eyes and they don't have a treatment for it also because the condition their social economic background is so so poor okay they don't have actually money and uh, what all uh, they have managed to get out of bangle making is somehow they have got what uh, that kacha house and some meal out of it Savita, young girl in, dra uh, in a drab pink dress, sits alongside an elderly woman. Now, there has been a description about a young girl called as Savita, and she is also making bangles. Okay, soldering pieces of glass as her hands move mechanically like tongs of a machine. I wonder if she knows the sanctity of the bangle she helps make. So this young girl, hands are so perfect uh, while make, making this bangle. In that process of bangle making, she is so perfectly moving the tongs. And very she her hands are so, so adjusted in a perfect manner. And our narrator worries or rather wonders. Do this young girl know what is the importance of these bangles? Because I told you from uh, in, uh, uh, when we started that these bangles have a special place in Indian culture. It is having a 
special uh, place for Indian women. Uh, they actually, um, it is a must part of their tradition, a must part for a married woman in India. So how, what we see here, see, I wonder if she knows the sensitivity or uh, sensitivity of the blind girl she's, she helps me. It symbolizes an Indian women's siha, suha, sorry. Okay, auspicious in marriage. So these bangles are the actually uh, the symbol of a married lady. All those married lady in India, uh, if their husbands are alive, then they used to wear bangles. If they become widow, they are not. According to traditional customary or according to this custom, uh, these women actually withdraws. Uh, wearing, uh, they withdraw themselves from wearing the bangles. So this bangle has a holy place in women's life in India. Okay, means that is the symbol of suha for them in India. Those women whose counterparts or whose uh, whose whose partners or we can call whose husbands are alive, they used to wear bangles with grace and pride. For them, that is a symbol uh, pride. Uh, that is a symbol of this suha. But if the husband is no more, they withdraw themselves from wearing it. Okay, it's still in India, there are customs which is still prevailing like if the husband dies, then there is a traditional ceremony of breaking the bangles of a lady and uh, actually telling the society that she can no more wear bangles. So it, in India, it has a great place. So our, our, our narrator is really frustrated Does this young girl knows what is the importance. It will dawn on her suddenly one day when, it, uh, when uh, her head is draped with a red veil, her hands dyed red with a henna and red bangles rolled onto her wrist. So our narrator is just telling that this uh, wearing red bangles, what she is actually making, this young girl Savita, one day this will come, this suhag or this uh, ritual will come on this young girl immediately somewhere when she will get married, when, when uh, during that process of marriage, when uh, that mehendi will be applied, her head will be actually veiled with that red uh, dupatta and she will also become a bride one day. Then she will understand probably what's the importance of bangle she is making. Okay. She will become a bride like the old women beside her too became one many years ago. So beside Savita, an uh, elderly woman has been sitting. She, she was already married. She still has a bangles or her dress but no light in her eyes. Oh my God, this elderly woman, probably uh, Savita's mother or grandmother, she's, she is actually having bangles on her wrist but no life no light in her eyes means in that due course of bangle making her eyesight has been lost ek waqt se bhar khana bhi nahi khaya she says in a voice drained of joy oh my god these families who are involved in bangle making they have what they have achieved out of bangle making see they have not got a proper meal a day also. Then what's the word? Today we are very calculated. Okay, if I give you my book, what's my importance? What, uh, what I will get? Okay, if I tell you um, um, about this practical, what I'm going to tell, are you going to share your refresher with me? We are very calculative in that. We always try to see our profit that either we are in profit uh, term or we are in loss term. Okay, but see, these people, they are really what we can call them. We can call them foolish. Oh my God, you have not actually got a proper meal a day. Still you are doing that work. We never used to do. Huh? Do we do? No. If we get loss, if we are in loss, if we don't get any profit after doing some work, we never do anything. But why these people are doing? Why, you know, because they are really uneducated. They have not ever thought that they should come out and do something different so that they can improve their condition. That much is their, um, we can call what a pathetic condition. 
she has not even enjoyed one full meal in her entire lifetime that's what she has reaped her husband an old man with flowing beard says i i know nothing except bangles all i have done is to make a house for the family to live in oh my god that old women uh, husband is also a old man and he says that i don't know anything likhna padhna mujhe nahi aata means they are totally illiterate and only thing is they know how to make bangles and what he has been able to do what is this only achievement in his entire career as a bangle maker that he has somehow managed to build a house okay that is his achievement can you imagine the air condition oh my god they are in a, such a pathetic condition then why to carry this work on if you are not getting something huh let me check once more why video is working or not and then we will carry forward yes it's working so hearing him one wonders if he has achieved what many have failed in their lifetime he has a roof over his head oh my god even after that this old woman is very happy because he for him uh, he has achieved his target of making a house though it's a kachcha house doesn't matter but he has achieved something that others have not achieved as mukesh house we have seen it is full of it's just like a shovel a very hovel sorry just like a very dirty hut we can know what we we know all what a hut we have which which house we call a hut okay so others have not managed to build that also so this man is very satisfied with his life the cry of not having the money to do anything except carry on the business of making bangles not even enough to eat rings in every home so it is not like that they they have never actually gone through their conscious level they have to they do have gone through their conscious level that why to carry on such work uh, which is not giving us money which is not actually improvising our status the young man echo the lament of their elders little has moved with time it seems in ferozabad years of mind numbing toil have killed all the initiative and ability to dream oh my god youngsters do thing and they do curse their ancestors you know youngsters the young people the younger generation do think that this is a stupid work of bangle making because they are getting no profit there is no improvement in the life there is no money making no food quality no improvement so we should actually stop it but why they are not stopping that work why they have not got enough courage to do something else beyond bangle making because they have really been toiled means they have been actually tortured in due parts of time and that's why in this due course of time all their motive and all their courage have been lost and rather these people these people who are in ferozabad who are actually involved in bangle making are actually have lost their hope of doing something else apart from bangle making but why La, why who has actually crushed their hopes let's see why not organize yourselves in cooperatives i ask a group of young men who have fallen into the vicious circle of middlemen who trap their fathers and forefathers Oh my god so narrator is telling why don't your people organize yourself you form a cooperative you form a self help group you actually open your account in bank and as a good business you try to carry forward this bangle making you just do it like a business sell the bangle in a proper uh, rate why you are not doing it even if we get organized we are bonds who will be hauled up by the police beaten up uh, beaten and dragged to the jail for doing something illegal they say there is no leader among them no one could help them see things differently their fathers are as tired as they are they talk endlessly in spiral that moves from poverty to apathy to greed and to injustice oh my god it is not like that that in the business of in the business is market bangles do not have values yes bangles do have values they are sell at a high rate but you know this actual bangle makers 
actually this middleman have actually trapped them in their cunning traps okay so what they had this business people do they actually take these bangles from these poor bangle makers at a very very low cost and then they sell it into a big retail market at a very high cost number of business uh, these middlemen are involved in this and they says that even if we try to organize ourselves even we try to unite you know what they will do what they will do to us they will actually the police is going to come will pull will put us into jail our boys are going to get beaten up in jail and they don't actually allow us to form cooperative so the, we here we find that these bangle makers are actually illiterate and poverty is the biggest curse for them illiteracy and poverty is the biggest curse for them so the advantage has been taken by this middleman all the middle businessmen all the so we were looking here that how listening to them i see two distinct worlds one of the family caught in the web of poverty burdened by the stigma of caste in which they are born the other vicious circle of the sahukars the middlemen the policemen the keepers of the law the bureaucrats and the politicians together they have imposed the baggage on the child that he cannot put down before he is aware he accepted as naturally as his father they do anything else would mean to dare so here we see that uh, there are two aspect of this Well, number one the children, the people who are actually involved in bangle making who are bangle makers they take it as their caste and above that caste the worst in condition is their poverty and they take it as their destiny and the other group of people like one man a uh, one type of a uh, one group is who is burdened with the casteism of bangle making apart from burdened with poverty okay and the other group which we are having is all the people who are educated who are actually middlemen bureaucrats policemen saugars they all actually uh, they make uh, they join their hands and they actually uh, they actually thrash and dominate and they crush these bangle makers who are uneducated who are uh, who are poor people who really don't know anything about their rights so these group of educated people who are called as bureaucrats who are called as politicians who are called as keepers of law who are called as policemen who are called as middlemen they are crushing Uh, like uh, uh, like that heavy baggage has been put on on the child which he can never put it down they are crushing the scenario or situation of bangal makers like anything no sense of humanity has ever been sensitized in these educated people minds and if they think anything else to do it has always been uh, taken by these group of educated people as a dare or a courage which these people does not supposed to show them off okay so what is this right now scenario is Uh, and daring is not part of his growing up when i sense a flash of it in mukesh i am cheered so they have lost that they uh, they have lost all their hope they have lost all their courageous attitude and they have uh, lost all their conscious level and they don't dream of doing anything else than bangle making who all those who are involved in bangle making they are actually are taking the burden of their casteism poverty their uneducated uneducatedness every Everything they are carrying forward, but Mukesh do dare to dream of something, and that's what really has been sensitizing this our narrator. And uh, I want to be a motor mechanic. He repeats, he will go to a garage and learn, but the garage is a long way from his home. I will walk. He insists. Do you dream of flying a uh, of flying a plane? He is suddenly silent. No, he says, staring at the ground in a small murmur. There is an embarrassment that has not yet turned into regret. He is content to a dream of cars that he see hurtling round the streets of his own town. Few aeroplanes fly over Firozabad. 
So when our narrator actually senses that this jeering is in, in, in Mukesh, uh, our narrator is really happy. And our narrator is asking, let me check my video is working or not. Yes, it is working. So I will tell you that uh, uh, the narrator really keeps on instigating Mukesh. That Mukesh, uh, you don't know how to drive a car. He said, I'm going to learn about it. I'm going to the uh, workshop or the service room. And there was no workshop uh, for motor mechanics like that. And he said, I will walk as it was far away. And once he can drive a car, okay, once he can... Mukesh can drive a car then our aunts, uh, the, our narrator is asking can you uh, can you dream of driving uh, driving an airplane and he actually becomes very silent because he knows the limitation of his dreams that Mukesh is really uneducated he have not gone to school any in any standard so he know what he has to dream about what all are his limitations so he dreams of becoming a motor mechanic and then Definitely here we see that uh, Mukesh is far more courageous because his surrounding he has a rigid environment where he cannot dream of doing something else in comparison to Sahib. Sahib was not having any such uh, cunning uh, trap around himself. He was his free master. He could have tried to achieve his dream in a more great manner but he compensated on a different aspect and here the scenarios are totally different for Mukesh there is no ray of hope even though he is actually struggling for it so here we finish our chapter my dear children and I would like to give you uh, two questions as an assignment number one is Law Spring explains the grinding poverty and tradition. Definitely, it explains it. We have seen the two stories. So you can write that condemns thousands of people to a life of abject poverty. Do you agree? Why or why not? Yes, you agree to it. And if you don't agree, you have to give the reasons for it. How is Mukesh more ambitious in life than Sahib? Give a reasoned answer. This I already explained to you that Mukesh is really more ambitious as his conditions are more rigid than Sahib. Sahib was not having such a trap or restrictions such as he could have gone for far more courageous way but Mukesh has done a daring way in, in spite he was having a lot of limitations and restrictions. So I am just giving you a clue for it. So do this assignment and do send me in your message option and uh, uh, when this will be uploaded I will be sending you the worksheet of this chapter number 2 which I have not sent in part 1 for it. Okay. So till we meet next time. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.